I am Professor Kamal Abdel Malik. I come to you from Alexandria, Egypt, and we met Sameh Mehod Madgesh Thank you very much for the invitation. We are going to get uh, straight to our session, which is uh, it is about uh, speaking and writing Aden, linguistic diversity and distinction. Uh, I'd like to just immediately alert you to one of the essential values of this session, which is more often than not, we think that Arabic is very closely associated with Islam. And therefore, if you want to have an Arabic program, you put it in Islamic studies, you always put it close to Islam, giving the impression to people who are not specialists that Arabic is only for Muslims. Not correct. Well, Arabic has been also the religious medium for a lot of pietistic religious texts in communities such as the Jewish communities all over the Arab world, my own home country. And don't forget we have between 15 to 20 million Christians in Egypt who are conducting their own services also in Arabic. Not only that, but in this panel, you will be surprised to hear also about we don't have one variety of Judeo-Arabic, we have different. And the, now we're going to, speak, uh, to hear the first person on this uh, uh, panel, which is Uri Milamed. Okay? So Dr. Uri Milamed is going to talk to us about an important text called Alhamdulillah, those of you who know Arabic, means, you know, praise be to the Lord, and the Judeo-Arabic translation of the scroll of Esther, and uh, of course, even the three panelists will always stress this whole idea of preservation versus innovation, because nothing in life stays the same, including Judeo-Arabic. So, uh, we start with uh, Dr. Uh, Uri Milamet, who is actually a sociolinguist uh, teaching at the Hebrew University and uh, specialized in, he actually calls it the languages of Maimonides, the kind of different dialects, I suppose, as well as he has been, on oh, that's <coughs> impressive for me, he has been a member of the Hebrew Academy, Hebrew Language Academy, which is something remarkably, uh, you know, honorable uh, to be. And uh, he had several publications, and I just want to give him the chance to immediately start because we don't want to waste a lot of time. All right, and we will have two more panelists other than uh, Dr. Uri, and each one of them, and I'm here. I'm going to act like a, an Egyptian sergeant, okay? <laughs> Strictly speaking, 20 minutes each, all right? And with one exception, because we got a petition. We accepted the petition for, from another Dr. Ori Shakamon, who said, I want 21 minutes. <laughs> and I said, how can an Egyptian say no to such a request politely you know, give it to me before the session. So, Dr. Uri. <laughs> okay, when we are about to finish, I'm just gonna raise my hand. Thank you very much. Um, as, we, as we all, the Jews and the Muslims are uh, sharing any uh, opening uh, action or something, praising God, so in the Gnisa we find in Aramaic, Bishmoch Rahmono. And the Yemenites say, Bashem Rahamon, Mole Rahami. And in Arabic, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Now, I'm going to first of all thank all the people who are behind this uh, wonderful co uh, conference. And I'm grateful that I'm in the first session, and I'm the first in the first se session. <laughs> so I get my anxiety right immediately. So thank you, Dr. Rahel uh, uh, Yadid, and Dora Arusi, and all others, which I'm not going to elaborate now, 
and mention their names, okay? So thank you, thank you, thank you. Within the field of study of popular literature, limited attention has been paid to the literary Judeo-Arabic of Yemen and Jewry. This topic can be divided into two types. The first one is original compositions were uh, written by Yemenite native speakers utilizing any of, of the Arabic dialects of Yemen. For example, so uh, let me give you the, the examples. First of all, Mahabar, al fit Teshuva, and Ru'ya al-Yaman, the famous novel, the famous story by Haim Hikshush. The second one, imported compositions, which were uh, long books and stories that came to Yemen from other communities that spoke different dialects of Judeo-Arabic. For example, the Midrash about the Ten Commandments, we find it also in the Geniza uh, material, the Lamentation, Gustav or Qissaf Hanna or Hanno, okay, the Lamentation about Hanno Sabat Auladaha, the famous story from the Talmud, and the last one, which I'm going to talk about, Alhamdulillah or Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah is a popular Midrashic translation of the scroll of Esther in Judeo-Arabic. It is written in rhymed prose with 12 chapters accompanied by short poetic introduction starting with the words Alhamdulillah, praise to God. Okay? Like the Ruba'iyat of uh, Umar al-Khayyam. The Jews of Yemen and uh, the Jews of Aden are still reading it. <coughs> Traditionally, they ascribe this literary composition to the, an author with the name uh, Rabbi Yosef At-Tubrani. God knows from where they got the At-Tubrani. Because today you will hear that his name wasn't At-Tubrani. Okay? Different names of the name of, uh, of, uh, of this uh, same uh, poem are Sefer Esther Malka, the book of the Queen Esther, Ma'aseh Esther Malka, the same thing, and also Perush Megillat Esther or Tafsir Megillat Esther in Yemenite Tiklali. Okay? Next one. There are many scholars, Adani or non Adani, who wrote about this custom to read it. The Shabbat before Puri, okay, Shabbat Zahor. And also they uh, 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 describe with the nice details about the, the whole ceremony, how did they do it. They continued also after they immigrated to Israel and they still keeping it here and there in, in uh, Tel Aviv area, mostly, okay. Uh, Rabbi Yaakov Minzili, an Adani uh, rabbi, native speaker, wrote about it. Professor Uven Aroni, uh, Aroni wrote about it. But the, the best uh, uh, summarized description is the following in English, okay? By Aliza Moore, a lady, lived, uh, lives in uh, Yad el in Tel Aviv area, and she published in, 19, in uh, 1213 two books describing the whole Jewish community of Aden with many, many details. She was born there. And this is her work. On the Saturday night of Shabbat Zahor, before the holiday of Purim, Sefer Esther HaMalga, the book of Queen Esther, is read, and in it is thanksgiving to the creator of the world, who reserved the decree from morning to light and joy. This book, written in a Judeo-Arabic language, was composed by Yusuf At-Tubrani. The plot begins with an introduction to the story of the scroll called Alhamdulillah. This book was published in Aden by Moshe ben Yehuda Menachem Mesa, which we heard in the previous uh, lectures, and uh, in 1904. The custom is to recite this story on Purim, also at home, okay, within a family setting, when everyone is seated around a table generously set, they uh, read, uh, read or read uh, from the actual uh, scroll of Esther in the synagogue, okay? And in order to increase the festiveness, bridegrooms were chosen to read it. Very interesting, okay? 
to just to increase the joy. Al farah wa surur. Next one. <coughs> when we are searching, going backward, okay, with the generations, going to the other Jewish congregations in the, let's say, the uh, Islamic world, okay, and in Cairo, Geniza, we find this specific text, this story in Judeo Arabic, okay? In fact, we don't know, we, we don't have any details about the poem or his historical background. Samuel Poznanski, in 1914, uh, already settled the question as he wrote. The Nusha Ashamsani, Ibli Korsafek Haye Sharat, Kimatsanu Hashem Haze Ben Aravi. That means the Arabic text of it. Bumi Hasle Mako, Shamsaniya, the Ezor Nehar Habor, Habor, the biblical Habor in some of the places, okay, mentioned with the group of locations that the, the Jews from uh, Palestine were exiled by Nebuchadnezzar <coughs> Melech Babel to there. Okay, so this is we are talking about the center of Asia, Mesopotamia. Okay, the border between the three lands: Iraq, uh, 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 Turkey, and Syria. Okay, Ashansania today is in Syria. Okay, this is close to the current uh, part of uh, settlement. Okay, now let's see the next one. We based it on uh, uh, Islamic sources, and we find uh, it, so we have many sources in uh, Arabic, uh, very very classical geographical books, and here we have three of them: Ibn Khurdabbe and Yaqub al Hamawi, Hamawi from Hama from Syria, and also Iskandar Dawood. I'm going to read only the second one: Yaqub al Hamawi. 12th, 13th century, في كتابه معجب البلدان. And he says, الشمسانية كأنها منسوبة إلى تفنية الشمس. بليدة, بليدة means uh, a small city, a small town, okay, uh, with the diminutive pattern, okay. بليدة بالخابور. خابور etymologically is حبور, the biblical حبور. Next one. Now, uh, what do we know about this guy? Yosef Ashamsani. It appears that he is also <coughs> was a poet who wrote three lamentations to Tisha Be'ah. And uh, they were actually, through the generations, were reciting in, the, in synagogues in the Mesopotamia maybe in Bukhara, maybe in uh, Iraq, maybe in uh, Persia, in Judeo-Arabic, okay? And here are the beginning of, the, of these three lamentations, as you see here, okay? I'm going to read only the, the Judeo-Arabic to, uh, uh, to uh, make you uh, a little bit familiar with the text. أقول من بعد شكري لله جل جلاله The second one. أقول وفي الفؤاد لهيب نار وفي الأحشاء لدا لدا الدفينة. and the third one أمو بنا يا سادة كما لنا والعادة وننبب لبيت المقلس ونفرش الرمادة. so you can see his his style is very high. he really knew Arabic completely and as we I will mention later on something about his knowledge of Hebrew. Next one. We are going to talk about the transmission of the text. Apparently, it was really vast in all the area, in many, many congregations that were spoken, uh, spoke uh, Arabic, okay? So it, it could be also rich uh, Syria and Lebanon, Tzor, Sidon, also the Cairo Geniza, as I mentioned before. There are at least five main transmissions of the text. The first one, the Babylonian version. This is the original place. The second one, the Cairo Geniza Collections version. Here I have to thank uh, Dr. Rahel Hassan, a good uh, friend and colleague of uh, Judeo-Arabic, <coughs> late Judeo-Arabic. 
she sent me a list of over 100 pieces, fragments from the Cairo Geniza from this specific composition. The third one, the Syrian version, and the Yemenite version, and apparently the channel was from Yemen into Aden, because most of the editions are mentioning that uh, uh, specifying that the uh, uh, manuscript came from Yemen, not directly from Iraq, okay? Uh, with this language. Zot matzanu b'chivat yad b'teman u'mechune le'hakam kvod morenu haram rabbi Yosef Abdumbrani zichro l'chagye ha'olam haba. That means two congregations relating to the composer with the name Rabbi Yosef Abdumbrani, the Yemenites, and the Edenites, okay? <clears throat> now, I can show you a little bit of the printed edition. Here is the Baghdad edition, okay? From 1892, that was published in Baghdad by the rabbi, the famous rabbi, Rabbi Shlomo Bechor Hutzin, okay? And here we have also two examples of manuscripts. The second one is the version of the Adani version, which is interpolated, interpolated with a lot of additional uh, 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 stitches. Yeah, everyone with his imagination add all kinds of you know rhyming exactly to fit the whole thing. But from his you know his knowledge, his uh, but the first one, the Emmanite version, is clean without any. Apparently, this is a. Uh, uh, much more attached to the Iraqian or Babylonian version of the text from 16th century. Here you can see the uh, the manuscript, which I'm based uh, based my knowledge about it. Okay, this is a, a JTS uh, manuscript of Tiklal, Yemenite prayer book. Okay, and here is the text with the upper uh, upper level uh, uh, punctuation, the Babylonian punctuation of the whole text. And this is clean and written uh, uh, according to the classical way of writing Judeo-Arabic, not the later one. The later one we find in the uh, Adenian version, okay? Next one. Let's see now how it was published in, in uh, Aden. So we have three editions, printed editions that was in Aden, and three editions in Eretz Israel. As you can see, number one, number two, and number three, number, th uh, number four, sorry. Number four is very interesting. It's written, Kaf Bet Samech Taf Nun, the print house. This is actually a British merchant who came and dwelt in Aden. He was dealing with India, and he built the only printing house in Aden. His name was William Kaxten. Kaxten. So it should be corrected, not like it was written, uh, written with that, but with Ka. William Kaxten. Okay, and here we have the other versions. Again, you can see this is the first printed version from uh, Aden by Menachem Awad, Awad, which was reversed into uh, uh, English with the word equivalent, you know, sound, Howard. Aba, Awa, Howard. How nice. <laughs> yes. And the second one was printed in Petah Tikva. Here you can see it from uh, uh, Tarvat. Okay. Now, I want to, uh, uh, to read these three verses from chapter 6, the first Haman Harasha in Mahshem of Zichro. I'm going to read it. You can see one example of interpolation of the Adeni version in the third uh, uh, verse, okay? Because we said this is quad, uh, uh, quadri radical or quadri lines or stitches that appears in the whole poem. But the, 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 the third one, as you can see, there are some additional stitches, okay? So you can follow me with the uh, English translation. I'm going to read it and then we will hear the cantor, the Adeni cantor, is really reading it, performing it, uh, 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 apparently at his home or something like that. 
وأن الأردشيري الأردشيري زي كينج أحشفروش أقام همان له وزيري وكان همان رديء شريري صاحب جه وماله كثير ثم رفع قدره والشان وصار في منزله كالسلطانة هي ريت كل سلطانة إذا قعد ليحكم في الديوانة وحوالي الحجاب والغلمانة فور ان فور نعم لاتس سي ذا ثيرد وان وإن عبر في قنص يصيدي وحوالي وحوالي الريات والبنود ثم تجاه ساير الجنود ومعهم البازات والفهود وإن عبر بمحفل بعودي قاموا وقاموا وخروا to prostrate, to prostrate okay? كلهم سجودي so the last two stitches are really interpolated later on no one knows from where now we are coming to listen to this uh, uh, performance okay how do I do it where is it Uh, yeah, yeah, this one. composition deriving from Mesopotamian Judeo-Arabic towards the end of the early Middle Ages, I assume 13th, 14th centuries. It uh, uh, established itself as it uh, spread throughout the Jewish communities in the Islamic world, becoming canonical and well-known, especially among the Jews of Aden, throughout the ages. By accepting this literary creation as an Adami uh, liturgical custom, it also included the women in this joyous uh, communal celebration, just as they share the rather sad lamentation on Qissat Hanno, on Tisha B'Av. At the same time, Oh, okay. At the same time, this custom added a new level of significance to this biblical story since it was dealt uh, with an impressive woman who saved her people. 
This provided the elderly woman, uh, women with a uh, leader figure whom they could admire and with whom they might even identify. One has to take into account the fact that the majority of the women in Judeo-Arabic communities were excluded from the world of literacy. As a result, oral recitations, in particular of stories, gave additional <coughs> significance Leave it, leave it, I'm going to read and that's it. Significance for them and became part of their uh, uh, gender memory. This story, with its outstanding female hero, accessible in their mother tongue, provided them with a sense of belonging and importance. Its learned author, Rabbi Yusuf Ash-Shamsani, provided a translation with colorful content and an adaptation that withstood the test of time. This was the result of the author's familiarity with the surrounding Islamic world, the Adab literature, and his poetic knowledge and personal style. <coughs> it seems to me that the entire composition requires a new study which will enable the publication of a scientific critical edition based on the various Geniza fragments that have been identified thus far. This project would also benefit from a publication of the transmitted versions of the text. Then we will be able to learn about the path it took, how it was accepted and integrated into the various Jewish congregations in the East through the ages. <coughs> okay, we the last, the last page. One minute. And that's it, that's this it. is the last paragraph. Okay. Many scholars in, uh, and readers would be very appreciative, especially those re researching the following fields. The history of the Jews of Yemen and Aden, Middle Arabic dialects, Judeo-Arabic dialects, Jewish languages, Biblical commentary and homiletic approaches, ethnographic and anthropological studies, and any interested in the heritage of Oriental Jewry during the Middle Ages. And I will add, don't forget, Al-Hikmah Mashriqiyya. 